custom tab to the existing standard SAP application. That is the requirement. Now to realize this requirement, we essentially have to do the enhancement at BOPF. So we are going to do business object enhancement. If we just want to add fields into the standard SAP data model, then we don't have to create any business object enhancement. But we create business object enhancement when we want to create more nodes, custom nodes in the standard SAP business object. We will be doing enhancement to the standard SAP application at the front end and enhancement to the standard SAP business object. Okay, if it is freight order, freight booking, then TAR business object will be enhanced. If it is forwarding order, then uh, TRQ business object will be enhanced. So that's how the whole process. So, so far we spoke about uh, FPM and we spoke about uh, BOPF. Then we also did one hands on session on floor plan manager and one hands on on BOPF uh, by adding customer specific fields in the standard SAP business object and node. But this particular hands on session need, uh, you know, involves FBI framework also. So we haven't spoken about FBI framework uh, theoretically. So we are going to learn FBI as well. Then once we have sufficient understanding about floor plan manager BOP of integra integration framework, then we can go ahead and start doing the hands on session. So that is what we are going to cover here. So if you can see that what is the FBI basically. FBI as we have been talking about floor, floor plan manager BOP of integration is a framework for linking the floor plan manager front end and the BOP of back end. Want to work with one business object and one node at a time. We, you, we do not need FBI view configuration, but if we want to extract the data from several relevant nodes and several related business objects then we definitely need fbi view configuration so we will see it in the system also and we also see some benefits usage and benefits so it offers configurable integration so we create some configurations in uh, fbi as well it provides certain generic guibb feeder classes so that is, those are the generic UABB feeder classes which are used to design form layout or list layer, list table control layout or tree control layout, etc. And uh, we do have AppCC also application controller configuration that steers the entire application behavior. So what tab should be displayed, what tab is to be hidden, etc. Then uh, FBI configurable objects are reusable. You can use that object at multiple places. Okay, so that's the benefits here and uh, some of the features also you can see service calls to BOP of based BOS to, to get the data to push the data into the database, etc. So we can use, essentially perform crude operations. So you can create an instance, you can modify, delete, etc. in the form or table control or tree UABB. Then we can also trigger an action from UI, UI user interface. So here you will see in this slide end to end picture that how does the FPM, FBI and BOP of integration is happening. Right side you will see several elements in it and left side you will see the configurations are you know frameworks in detailed. So we'll talk about frameworks. So floor plan manager as we have been saying that floor plan manager is an another framework which is built on top of webdin proab app and uh, floor plan manager framework inherits certain fundamentals and uh, you know uh, the concepts of webdin proab app it is inherited from webdin proab app then floor plan manager is a configurable user interface so therefore we end up in creating application configuration floor plan configuration component configuration etc that is what you can see at the fpm right side application configuration floor plan configuration and guibb component configuration but behind the application configuration floor plan configuration guibb component configuration again the coding that you see is the runtime 
a webbed in pro coding will be generated automatically right then we have an another framework called fbi floor plan manager bop of integration so this is also configurable integration framework and it provides certain feeder classes so those feeder classes acts as a a bridge between uh, you know front end and back end the feeder classes helps to bring some metadata so that we can you know design the ui and from the configuration perspective we have application controller configuration and view configuration application controller configuration steers the entire application behavior view configuration is for you know for uh, to to get the data from which business object which node and uh, you know data data displayed on the ui yeah so then bopf is the back end framework so here we have business objects various types of business objects and uh, as such it is called as configuration but it is not a user interface configuration it is a bo configuration business object configuration so we do design like you know how many nodes are required you know what is the hierarchy of these nodes what levels of nodes required is it a you know but for sure every business object will have at least one root node and all other nodes are child nodes so when you say child nodes is it uh, you know root node and immediate nodes immediate all nodes are child nodes or can there be any child child and more child relationship then you have a node elements also what are those node elements determinations actions validations all these they are also part of the design only like you know every node element has its own importance whether you want to perform crude operation whether you want to extract the data just extract the data no crude operations but then uh, you want to perform an action or you want to validate the data all these you know you have different uh, node elements you can create as many as node elements depending on your business need business requirement that is all come under part of bopf design then you have to to invoke those uh, you know elements uh, to trigger the determination to trigger the validation to trigger the action they are all done by bopf framework itself but we have to tell the framework hey i am doing this so therefore you need to perform this crude operations or you need to create an instance there are two interfaces uh, which invoke these node elements service interface and transaction interface service interface is used to you know get the data you know service interface has a you know a limited interaction with bopf buffer whereas a transaction interface it it will push the data into the database and for the first time when you launch the application the service interface also gets the data from database and it keeps the data into the buffer right so uh, that's how uh, the service interface and transaction interface will work now here from the fbi perspective you see application controller configuration is most important thing the fbi is used in sap tm and therefore so they have delivered a separate tm specific application controller configuration now how does this application controller look like if you see here there are several parameters you can define and one of the parameter is you know application controller class who definitely need some logic abap logic written in it which can be used steer the application behavior you say for example you have entered the freight order number and you went into uh, you know application main screen where you can see business partner general data and several tabs now here when you get into the main screen business may have different departments finance department planning department and order management department so the order management department is not allowed to see the transportation planning related things and then finance for example transportation charges is the uh, tab that is representing finance related so it is amount at very high level from the solution perspective you will have to hide that charges tab right so that you cannot show to the uh, user who is coming from the order management department now how do you hide that tab how do you remove that tab 
that you will have to write some enhancement in the application controller class so for such kind of requirements you can enhance the application controller class write the logic and to hide the tab that is the purpose of application controller class to steer the entire application behavior okay now the other configuration in the fbi is view configuration you will you will define business object node ui structure etc what are the various components feeder class feeder class is to support configurable integration of fpm and bopf because you know we want to design the ui layout so you need a feeder class to bring the metadata from bopf this exit interface class is specific to guibb so it is specific to guibb if you want to control the visibility of a field or you know you want to change the field label name dynamically or you know you want to enable field visible the field invisible it etc and you want to get the data before the data is displayed you want to change the data format etc you can also create an enhancement in the exit class and you can do that uh, mapper class and it is also called as conversion class so mapper class is used to convert the unit of major date conversions uh, currency conversions for all such kind of requirements the mapper class is used so there are various feeder classes that you can see for form slash bofu slash cl underscore fbi underscore guibb underscore form there is a separate feeder class for list tree tree separate tree class so they are all standard sap defined we will use the same feeder classes in our real time also and from the exit interface class perspective one is at the design time and another is at the run time design time uh, designing the ui layout when you are designing the ui layout so this design time interfaces related methods will be triggered when you are accessing the application say for example you are navigating from here to there the design is complete ui layout design is complete but you are when the data is coming and showing to the user that is when the run time uh, methods at the design time and at the run time so here you can see uh, adapt fields say for example you want to modify the field descriptions tooltip label field catalog etc this is where the method which needs to be implemented uh, for such kind of requirements adapt actions if you want to modify the action definition or action name say, then at the runtime so adapt data you are getting the data see here this is fields this is data so runtime you get the data design time you get the fields metadata right so uh, and you know at the runtime if you are getting a message and you want to modify that message or enrich the message you can do that in adapt messages so, at the runtime and design time you have different purposes and in the mapper class conversion class you can see for time conversions alternate key conversions etc you have a, a standard sap class and if you create a custom class that should be inherited from the tm super class so that you will get some methods and where you can write your custom logic how does the actual end-to-end -end travel looks like so user is logging into fpm application and first it will get the metadata the screen layout will be done then the data you know actual data will be retrieved you see initialize layer feeder class so it will get the metadata then get definition so it will also get the metadata it, it will initialize in the initialize stage it will identify what is the bo what is the node etc and get definition it will get the metadata screen design is done then the get data will be triggered so it will get the data retrieve retrieve by association etc uh in the before image is equal to x which means that it should get the data from database then all the way it is traveling back data display to user on ui so this is how the complete flow happens when user so for user he always see only front layer this is all happening behind the screen so this is from the save perspective so this is all standard sap we don't have any interference or influence here so save uh you know there is a three layer save it is pre commit and post commit so pre commit in the sense like it will validate whether any number to be created or if the freight order number is not created freight order number will be created then it will commit and then after the commit also post commit also it will check whether the data is consistent between the database and buffer so it will ensure the consistency between database and bu buffer 